Saracens against Harlequins is always one of those fixtures that gets the red marker treatment. Unsurprisingly, both teams go full bore in terms of selecting the home side with top performers like Sophie de Goody and Rosie Gallagher missing. Can still boast 14 internationals in their starting 15 and another five on the bench. Lottie Clapp has lived and breathed Saracens over the last five years, returns to a normal left-wing berth with Paige Farries on the other, Jess Breach in the 15 shirt, a back three that would grace most test teams. Beth Blacklock is given the duties of steering the ship from 10 with a comfort blanket of a player, Sarah McKenna, outsider. May Campbell is back at hooker, Poppy Cleal and Marley Packer lie in wait. The Red Roses stars and worth noting as well, Zoe Harrison back on the bench. Minimal changes for Harlequins, and why would you after such a morale boosting? Needed timely win last week over Sale. Emily Robinson, really subbing that match after a sizable bang, gets the nod on the open side, pushing Sarah Bonner up to the second row. Ahead of them, no Hannah Sims, so Sylvia Tirani moves across to loose head, and Connie Powell, another red rose on display, wears two. The back line is unchanged. Emily Scott getting to play fly half with that crisp service from Lucy Packer. Beth Wilcott and Ellie Kildown were on fire last week, running a mock and scoring just seven tries between them. But well, it's a very good afternoon to Cat Merchant. Still got that pace, haven't you, to get across <laughs> here from studio? Still there. Good afternoon to you. Afternoon, yeah. I did a quick sprint, a uh, bit of a footwork. Yeah, I'm here. Well, this league, although it has a short history, it's a rich history. And these two London clubs have been at the forefront of that. The teams to beat, who can challenge them? Can anyone else get into the final? That was the case, Cat, wasn't it, for many, many years, that the first four titles shared between them. But last season, there was a slight changing of the guard, but with 26 internationals in the starting 30 and such an intertwined pass, this is still a massive highlight in the season. Oh, yeah, it's huge. And for so many years, it was the game, the only game. And I think it's way better now for the league that you've got the Exeters, you've got the Gloucesters, the Bristols that are competing and putting their names up um, to it as well. But there's, there is no love lost between these teams. That's sure. We were talking to Burford in the uh, build up to the game and we're saying the hits, they just they go all out. It's a fixture that they love to play against each other. I like that. Burford. Well got winners together. <laughs> Still calling Good it by <laughs> her surname. But the Harlequins, it's, it's been a bumpy road, isn't it, last season? Unable to, to make the playoffs that has continued this season. It, it fits and starts the, of games. There's been performances. You think of the big game at Twickenham against Gloucester Harbury, but the only wins have come against the newbies, the, the Ealing Trail Finders, the, the Leicester Tigers. Up until last week, when they played that sale, sale side, slightly struggling, of course, but for an 80 minutes, the quarters were full of running, vigour and pace to record their biggest win of the season. Very timely. Yeah, and it just looked like everything started to click because it has been a difficult time for them. They have lost players, they've got players out with injury, so excellent timing for them to have that performance. And that player there is someone, Emily Scott, that leads the team by example, and I personally think she's fantastic at 10, really gets the ball wide, really dangerous, really good team. one to watch today, definitely for Quinns. Lottie Clapp, Marley Packer, co-captains leading this. Saracen side, at the other end of the spectrum, really, flying out of the trap. Siggy Tonga there, victory song, getting plenty of airtime for the first seven games. Then, as they described, a blip for the hands of Gloucester Harbury, the champs, but back on the horse last week, crushing of an healing side. Many have struggled against, not even firing on all cylinders, so they said. Eight tries, 48-17 win. Today they will need to be firing on every single cylinder. Yeah, they're, they're just, they're known for their pack, Saracens. Georgia Evans in particular is a real workhorse in that um, second row spot. Um, but it's how they can utilize their, their forwards as well as getting it to their backs today because they're, you know, the expectation and the pressure is on Saris. They're the team that are expected to perform today. Sarah Cox, <laughs> member of the British Empire now is our referee. 
the greatest rivalry in women's club rugby. The duel. Saracens against Harlequins, and it's Harlequins in the chain shoot. The go faster strike, not the quarters today. Retain that kickoff. It was a cute one, and that lady you were talking about, Emily Scott, right on hand. Yeah, that was an ideal start for them to kick off. They don't give Saracens the territory, they regain it themselves. Excellent skill set. And he killed up. Tackle! Oh, you come. Don't touch. Plenty of highlight reels from her this week. And he killed up. Full of running last week. Connie Powell. Big hit on her. There is Emily Scott, a little flat pass. There was a hand in there. She almost had hold of that. The you, you picked out, Cap. Georgia Evans. Just a knock-on, says referee Cox. Yeah, so really aggressive in that defensive line, flying up, because Quinn's one thing they do like to do is play nice and flat, uh, which is excellent, because if ball goes to hand here, actually latches through that gap, but just a little bit behind, a small little hand in there uh, from Evans, and it means that now um, Quinn's get that ball back. But a good start from them, starting strong. Crouch! Today, the, the physical, it's obvious Boys. it's a game of rugby. It's going to be so important for the, the mental side. And just dealing with those emotions is going to be absolutely key, isn't it? Just keeping things in check. Yeah, just kind of, you want to be firing, um, obviously, in your, your body, but, up, uh, you know, in the brain when you're thinking, you need to be cool, calm, collected, so that you can just make good decisions and know when to go for it and when to hold back. Heart in the oven, head in the freezer. That's the one. I was thinking of the phrase, and yeah. I just Crouch. couldn't quite... I was like, I'm going to ruin it, so I'm just going to gloss past it. It's OK. <laughs> yeah. I don't waste my evenings. <laughs> Set! First scrum of the afternoon, then. Solid. From Harlequins, and they... Come down this, like, shorter side to Nangy Tuima. Consistent performer, Nangy Tuima. Shauna Brown back at Harlequins now. Full of running last week, plenty of carries from her. <laughs> so again, they're trying to play that flat um, style of play, and I think it led to the knock-on and potentially was a player in front. Is that why it's been given the, the penalty there? Yeah, offside. Blacklock up against uh, Emily Scott today. Emily Scott's been, been moved around, hasn't she? Left wing and, and right wing. Yeah. Bella McKenzie was here at the beginning of the season. She's now returned to, to Australia. But this lady up against her today. So he has on the bench. Julia Dougal has been... Dougal, I should say, has been playing some good rugby. Fly half for Saracens. Put it on her shoulders today, Beth Blacklock. Scotland International. Campbell, Gregson. Good little bit of footwork there from Gregson. Thought she spotted a little bit of a gap and went for it, but a couple of knock-ons um, early on in this game, potentially just both teams maybe firing a little bit too much. Needs to get the skills uh, under check. Sydney Gregson. So many great centres in this league, aren't there? You look, Fidi Murray, Langi Tuima, Sidney Gregson, in a torrid, torrid time with, with injuries. He picked up three caps. Much younger years. Sending this week. Crouch! England's worst six nations. Bind! 2015. Yeah, loss against Wales. Stay no, so I retired. Um, World Cup, oh, um, World Cup final, last game. Yes. <laughs> Not a bad one to bat. Yeah, well uh, done. But you. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to watch it, and uh, yeah, that was a tough game. Not been required by England since, but such a consistent performer when she can string some games together, and she's in that form at the moment. Shauna Brown again asked to do some of the heavy work. Lucy Packer, missing for getting part of the season. Lochner, athletic South African second row, has just 
spilt that one forward in the contact. She's yeah. another player who's playing really well. Yeah, definitely, but they're just slight bits of um, error count creeping in early on into this game. But both teams are sort of working each other out, trying to settle. But I think from a Quinn's perspective, they have come out firing and they are looking to, to go for it this game. So I think they really have been boosted from that big win last week. Crouch! Jason's top of the tree, of course. Set! Stand yesterday, the sale in Leicester got five points. Not hitting their targets in terms of English qualified players. And changes to the table. That's what Saracens are hoping come this 80 minutes that they still sit at the top of the table. That's a lovely kick right deep into that Saracen tarp, into that 22 where they want to be playing their rugby. Oh, amazing. Yeah, 50-22 um, coming into play there. So it's a great spot. It was off a turnover. Um, so she knew the Saris back three weren't going to be in position. You can see them really tracking back hard there to try and get it. But what a beautiful bounce there to, to give them a really good platform now and line out inside the 22. Has that kicking game, of course. And Let's make sure we get bags numbers and bags of pace, Lucy Packer. A little, little bit through earlier. the yeah, come in. Welsh Sevens programme. Right, and she is very Welsh when you speak to her. See with her Welsh accent, but uh, we'll, the firm, for, we'll forgive her that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Plenty of caps for England now, playing the World Cup final, of course. Five out, Lucy Packer, lovely service. This is going to be a ding dong at line out time. Both what? like to drive it. I it, know that it's been a weapon for Saracens. And arrives again. He's in at first receiver. Lacha. First professional rugby player in Africa. Abby Fleming, nice offload from her. Connie Powell couldn't take it, and Saracens come away. Oh, Potentially a microcosm of the Harlequin season. Good places and accuracy letting them down. Stackles really killed up. Scott. Turani. Front row loves that ball in hand. Scott and Tuima. Right, we'll the okay. Playing the advantage for the for the knock-on. Oh, some knock-ons and losses in contact cap. So just, just the emotion that we spoke about earlier, just getting a little bit better of players just snatching at the ball somewhat. Yeah, and I think they just slightly yes. overran it, um, so yeah, meant the ball wasn't building, quite out uh, in building. front, but there was some beautiful passing in the build-up to that and really looking to um, create those mismatches uh, and, and pick them off. But yeah, just uncharacteristic errors at the minute. Crouch! 85% of their win success at their own scrum. Set. Four Saracens. The yeah, Infante, one of these ex Harlequins in the Saracens ranks. Inside Breach and Blacklock. Or is it Gallagher not playing today? Clear. Straight over the top of Emily Scott and, and Gregson puts on the pace. Gregson! Up to the 22. Saracens want quick ball. There's so many numbers on the right hand side here. Campbell. Nobody Scott makes amends. So Saracens just break away. Piling behind, don't they? Poppy Clearloo set it all up again. Diving into that midfield. Knocks it on. Yeah, it just shows how dangerous Saracens can be, though, from right back in their own half, from a really good carry from that, that woman on screen there, Poppy Cleal, 
incredible carry, pick off the scrum. She just decides, nah, not going to be tackled by you today, Scott. Breaks through. And that's the bit that I love, though. It's the offload. Next carrier could just carry, doesn't. She does that second offload to Gregson. And look how nice and balanced that she is when she runs. That footwork, that was a beautiful run. It's a Bosch run to start with off of Cleo and then Gregson. Lovely hands, good support in offload line, great footwork. Not involved in the uh, recent England cap, Poppy Cleo. Uh, 65 caps to her name. The, uh, the only contracted player not required by John Mitchell. So a little bit of stuff to prove for, for Poppy Cleo. I mean, it's an air of such strength, isn't it, for the Red Roses? Oh, yeah, when, when you actually look at it, that kind of back five, because, uh, you know, she can't play second row as well, can play back row, but it's a really competitive uh, position in the squad. So her not being uh, picked into it uh, and being a contracted player, she will be um, gutted, but I've no doubt she's going to dig deep and um, show us some really good performances and what she can do and what John Mitchell's missing out on. Was a run of some note, wasn't it? Yeah, she meant that. So. <laughs> Solid scrum. Looks up to the back, but uh, eventually it does get to Lang to him up. Right boot slightly wider. An advantage for Harlequins. Just Brooks picks it up and then Farris is on her shoulder. So industrious. Did you see the Canadian winger? Yeah, she really does look to go forward every time she has it. Like, even if she doesn't have space, she doesn't really mind. She'll just carry really hard into contact. A little bit of sun coming out here at the Stonex Stadium. Big crowd in for... The dual, plenty of activities going on. The centre of excellent team, the under-18 team, for these respective clubs playing playing after this game. Give them a shout out. Very proud moments for the players and, and parents alike. Sarah Bonner, the REF, takes the line out. Lovely angle. Will cut. Tirani. Momentum just stopped ever so slightly. Driving down the side, the Harlequins. And they've grabbed the first score. And it's Shauna Brown. First blood to Harlequins in the duel, 2024. Dream start for Quinns to stop Saracens from scoring after their impressive line break and to come back, play through their phases, get the penalty, go for the line out. And then not just that, executing it, that back inside. She has no right there, Wilcox, to be able to go through that gap. That should have been shot down uh, from the back of the line-out, but puts her pace on, carries and goes through. And then it's the calmness now of actually, they flooded that right-hand side to the defence there, and actually, Shona Brown just showing her class there and her ability to score from um, from those couple of metres out, but a good leg drive and over to present the ball. Of the season, ever present to him up. Simple enough for her and a real confidence booster for the kicker. She wasn't striking particularly well before the game. A couple of easy practice shots were a little bit wide, but Shauna Brown certainly knows her way to the trial and came off this fabulous run, didn't it, from Wilcox? Yeah, the, the, like the seas opened for her. She just came through, but um, yeah, lovely balanced runner as well. She showed last week she had a lovely line uh, for her try. Um, so a real dangerous runner, ball in hand, for sure. <laughs> Come on, just just so yeah, the three tries last week. Oh, Wilcox. Okay, Marley, no, no, you're done. Let me get the next trip right as well to take that kick off. And the boxy goes up.
with Saracens regain. Casola. One young cap player in this Saracen starting 15. Cleal again. Making dents, big dents as well. Cleal size dents. Lucy Packer puts into the safety of touch, of course. Poppy Cleal, sister plays for Harlequins. Bryony, not required today. It's plenty of rugby beginning of this season. Yeah, so she makes the initial breakthrough and she wants to offload, but offload isn't on because Quinn's defence um, get in between the initial line break really good and a good spot, but yeah, can't quite, it's not quite clean enough to get that ball away. But another good spot from Lucy Packer on that turnover, kick it through, and here we go. No, it's unusual for Saracens. That break is made there is normally that arrowhead, isn't it? Supporting players either side, but Lucy Packer controlling things here as it moves out wider. There is the scrum half again. She's snagged by Evans. So is Scott and Marley Packer's involved. Okay, okay, well done. Black lock. That's a black foot, it's all back, it's all back! Molly Packer shaped a kick. Alex Alterbury's heart was in his mouth for a moment as Farris tries to go inside, it's bashed out by Wilcox. Yeah, done for playing the ball on the floor there, but sort of passed to her when she was there. Now, you played with Marley for many a year. Uh, you ever seen her kick the ball? <laughs> I d uh, oh, I don't know. I don't think so. If I did, I'd have probably fainted. But, um, and yeah. you'd remember She's it as did, well, yeah. I suspect. <laughs> yeah. But she did line up like she was going to there, didn't she? But chose to go for hands instead. And then Cleal as well, showing not just a carrier, but passes yeah. that ball out wide. Yeah. And it's that ability. There's the dummy, oh. the dummy kick. A dummy show and go kick. Oh. Turn around. And then the hands here, the miss pass across. So uh, we were at pace, really good uh, decision. So about new tricks. <laughs> I'll let you finish that. Said nothing. <laughs> Tuna Brown could try to score a couldn't take it, and Gregson knew where the space was and acted on it very quickly indeed. Big shot on the far side. Really come back for that one. Don from Saracens. Yeah, I was wondering if they maybe wanted to look at that shot. Like, live, that did look pretty um, savage. It's not a clap who... So it's a line breaking the cover tackle across. Uh, OK, I thought there was impact on there, but actually I think she was already tackled, so the impact doesn't come in. Yeah, so it's not a high shot at all. Live, it looked like it was, but there, that's legal tackle. I mean, what a servant. Yeah, like, just insane work rate as well. Um, so, uh, I think there are wingers who want to do the flashy stuff, but she she gets in there and, and does all the dirty stuff as well and gets involved, but incredible player, long career. Yeah, over 150 appearances for Saracens now. They've She's been there and done it, three titles. And a brilliant foil as well to Marley Packer, the other co-captain. Fire and brimstone from Marley Packer and the cool, calm, collected thoughts of, of Lottie Clapp. Well, I think being a winger and captain is really difficult. So if you're going to go for that, like it shows um, how much they must have respected her to have done it for so many times. So um, great um, character there. Plenty of rugby all over the place at the moment. PWR takes a little break next week. Back to men's premiership rugby. The Cup returns next Saturday, 3 o'clock. Gloucester against Exeter on TNT Sports 1. And Ealing against Leicester on the Sunday. 2.30 again, TNT Sports 1 for you. There's literally no need to move from your sofa for weekend upon weekend. Literally, just rugby, just all, all day. Wall to wall. A 
there's that fire and brimstone that we're, we're talking about. That, the emotional barometer, isn't she, for, for Saracens and for the Red Roses, England? Yeah, she will really rally a team up and get them going. And it looks like actually she's been pretty clinical um, here because when she is firing up, you would you would see it. Um, but it, you know, we talk about workhorses, but she Molly Packer there, she, she is absolutely one of those. She is your go-to if you need someone to make a big hit, you need someone to make a turnover and a jackal, or you just want someone carrying hard. You can rely on her. It's Beth Wilcott, Crouch. who is uh, receiving some treatment. She's back up on her feet. Bond. Premiership winner, Sorry. of course, in Harlequins in 2021. Famous day for the club. Got the edge on in the scrum as well, and Packer goes down that short side. Freya Orkin, compact, powerful winger. Scott, a little dummy, past that rushing defensive line from Saracens. You can see the McKennas and the Infantes coming up. Kill down to Wilcock. Combination that worked so well last week against Sale at the stoop. Come out first. Do you want to roll first? Saracens not rolling away. Going all the way with Harlequins no at the problem, moment, Tuani. No issues. Magic sponge, first. and she's back up on her feet as well. Just a louder on the ball. <laughs> made of sponge. I've not heard that one. What did you say, the magic sponge? Yeah, the magic sponge. Oh, I thought you said she's made of sponge. No. I was like, I'm not, I've not heard she's that She's definitely not made of sponge. No, no definitely not. She's, uh, that would she's be no unit. good in a scrum. Yeah. Come on. That's <laughs> what <laughs> so I wondered. I was like, what's going on here? I'll just, yeah, I'll just give you a mark on the line out first. <laughs> that one got you. Yeah. What's at the end? That magic sponge might need to come back on that's for that's Georgia Evans now. Yeah. She takes a knee. I mean, look, I think they went out of fashion and, and <laughs> medically <laughs> some years ago, but yeah, yeah. just some running repairs. Georgia yeah. Evans, tough as teak, isn't she? Yeah. Yourself, okay? Really, really tough yeah, player. Yeah. Just gets involved. Uh, so many breakdowns like that one, and lucky not to. She was going for the steal, but um, didn't go her way with that. But yeah, everything's going Quinn's ways at the minute. Yeah, she's on her way. Wait, to the end of that line there. And then, wait, I'll put time back on, okay? You're done, Case. Beth Wilcox can't continue. Just just hobbling off in front of us here. Amy Lazell is on. There's Harlequins. No, she's fine. No, no. In the latest attack, that's the 22 metre line. Latcher. Devastating ball carrier. Packer again, whipping that ball away to Weimer. Little pump to Scott. Tuani again. Sponge has done its job. Taka. Walker. <laughs> Stepping away from it. Touch down. She's just dropped the ball. Just wondering if it's no, a little no, bit no, no, greasy yeah. out there, Kat. There was a little shower of rain, wasn't it? Yeah, up. perhaps. But also, Quinn's are getting it to the, the wing there where Orca doesn't have much room. She's not got a lot of space. They, they, I, I can see why they're moving it wide to try and play, but they've not created the space yet to get it into. So it can just get a little bit messy in that scenario. But there's, here's the run from Latcha, and you can see that she's double marked um, there as well, but still manages to make ground, like real powerhouse. Let go of a leg, let go of a leg. Driving more. Quinn's sniffing their second one here. Penalty advantage coming. Shot to nothing here for Lange Tuima. Izzy May, who's repelled. Packer comes away again, though. Scott, that was crossfield. Lazell, where is it bouncing? Out of touch, we'll go back for the penalty. Yeah, 
yeah, as you said, shot to nothing um, can look to give it a go. They'd look to try and run it first, which I like because one of my pet hates is um, penalty advantage and just straight away just kick it because actually you have time to be able to play, to build phases and actually try and go for a score. But they did try play it first, nothing on, then they went for the crossfield. Another chance here for Harlequins then. 7 0 up. First job is done right. She's trying to get her initial shove on. Paul is there for Packer. Sure, they wanted to. Give it out, Latcha again. Big Pulled tackle. McKenna, do not shout at this. From Evans, who's just bumped off, and again, Harlequin yeah, showing some patience here, here, showing some control. Latcha, triple tackle on her. But they keep it tight. Now Lucy Packer, just possibly a second too long to Ema. Wobbles one out. Needed to be crisp and accurate there, Harlequins. Saras is doing well to slow that quick ball down. Almost the second longer in terms of rock speed, these two teams, Harlequins. Okay, leave it up, Black. Second longer on average through the 80 minutes the this season. Lochner. Soft player on the ball. Trying to turn it over. Packer got it. She got the steal. And the hint, McKinley Hunt comes away. And the Packer leaves the kicking responsibility to Beth Blacklock. Quite rightly so. Eddie Kildun now has dropped it as well. <laughs> Epidemic of knock on. Yeah, and I think the hard work was done from Zaris. They'd done, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Packer that was in there. Burrow in for that ball, wins it. And then when Zaris kick, they need to exit. That's got to go into touch there. There's been tw two occasions where they've kicked it straight down Eddie Kildon's throat. And luckily for them at that time, it spilled. But she's so dangerous. They don't want to be kicking to her um, in those positions. They need to make their lines and clear. Well, England coaches at uh, all these PWR games through this season. Lou Meadows is here, the, uh, the attack coach for the Red Roses. She's waiting to speak to Dave. Where are you, Dave? Uh, I am at the exact opposite end of the stadium to you, actually, Johnny. You are quite a hard woman to find, Lou, but you've got a great vantage point here. Uh, first question today, business or pleasure? It's actually a combination of both. I don't think you can call this work and business when you're watching a brilliant game of rugby, but I've also brought my kids with me to enjoy it because they're really into the female game as well. So just an enjoyable day out, really, and I get to tick work off at the same time. Everyone wins. Uh, well, you've got the youngsters there. We're not going to ask them any questions, but have they got any favourite players? They do. I don't, obviously, as a coach, but they do. They're very big fans of Ellie Kildan, I think, just the... The way she runs, attacks, they think she's a really exciting player. And she's got a fabulous personality. She's really bubbly. And I think kids naturally gravitate towards people like that. And then they just like the game. They love the collisions. They get a lot of oohs and ahs come out as they're colliding. Marley Packer's another favourite for them. They love the way she's able to steal the ball back. They're always like, Mummy, she's got it again. She's got it again. So, yeah, a couple of favourites out there. She just made a turnover a couple of seconds ago, didn't she? Uh, coaches never switch off, we know that. So what are you looking for in the game today? And are you looking at any individuals in particular with the international rugby that's coming up? Yeah, so we've got a really big player watch programme going on as we build towards Six Nations and, and the World Cup itself. So actually our player base is huge and we're looking at the depth of what our squad's got. And so games like this are a fantastic opportunity for us to look across the game and see who's coming through. I and mean, then we can look at performance as well. 
So there's a few obviously roses within this team, but then there's some wider players that we're looking at as well and just how they go after it, how confident they are on the ball, the skill set they've got, and then what's their point of difference as a player and how are they working on and off the ball with the players around them. So there's so much going on. I think Quinns have come into this with a lot of confidence following their last win, so it's going to make it a really, really good game to watch as well, which will get the best out of those Saracens players equally. Well, it's set up beautifully and you're set up beautifully here as well. So thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. We're having a lovely time over here, John. Johnny, how is it over there? Well, we're like Lou, aren't we? we you can't really call this work. Uh, we're watching a, a cracking game of rugby, this, this rivalry. Players like Ellie Kildun. Flying Hartree. Out there on the field here at the Stonex. And what is an intriguing season in the PWR. Battle to that top four, of course, top two. She knows all about it, Marley Packer. And she's just playing blind. If I know Marley, I know her for okay, a couple of years, they will not like having not been in that final so dance at the end of last season. And that, I suspect, is driving them. Oh, yeah, Zari's like that is going to be such a big driver for them to to not just get back into it, but to get back to win it. So, so yeah, that's going to drive up. A, a lot of the, those players out there. Yeah, 40 points come into this game. They played their nine, just the to slip up, as we've mentioned, against Gloucester Harbury. 39 points. Extra 33, just 30. 21 Quins down low on 18. And the Harlequin scrum is getting the edge. And that won't please Alex Sorcery. Well, it's both up. The Saracens forwards coach. Definitely getting the edge there on the Harlequins. And for the majority of this game, Kat, we're bang on the halfway line here, but we've been looking left. Yes, yeah, which from leading into this game, first versus six, you might not have expected uh, this to be the way it's gone, but at the minute, Quinn's really they're defending um, well. Uh, when Saracens do have the ball, but they're dominating quite a lot of the possession as well. To get that detail right, that line out. Emily Scott thought she'd uh, recover this situation. And in front, they can't kick that loose ball to Ellie Kildan. Well, the two that have gone, like Lucy Packer on turnovers, has done two great kicks. That kick on the turnover, less so. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> a hen's teeth moment. <laughs> Marley Packer kicking the ball. Yep, you heard right. Now Sarah Bonner's doing it as well. Wait, wait. Don't go what are we seeing here? I'm not sure, but I saw some of your dancing as uh, Packer kicked that, and that, that's a sight <laughs> to behold in its own. <laughs> Leave Dad dancing alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say it was Dad dancing. <laughs> I'm not going to deny it, but... <laughs> At least that would be an excuse, I suppose. But in fact, <laughs> this time does get her kick right. But they're under pressure here, Saracens. And yeah. They're playing off the script. Yes, they are. They're, they're playing... Um, like, I assume it's off script. Uh, I can't imagine they've said to go in there and, and to, to kick like that. But I think that was the initial uh, kick from Infante that went straight to kill them, which then puts them back under pressure. So that's now three in a row, but here's the one uh, from Packer, but um, not a bad nudge, good distance on it. And then Bonner putting one back in as well. That didn't happen in my day. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe McGilchrist putting a boot to ball. Uh, to be fair, both absolutely rapid players, so, so they probably could off, yeah, but uh, no, right. they were, we're, they were the big the carriers. Lucy the Packer just shaping, just having a look. She's been very just impressive in this air. opening 25 minutes as, as Lucy Packer. Yeah, tactically, I think, played very well. I think the two kicks she has put yeah, in, especially the this. one that led to the 50-22, was fantastic. But organising, they just look like they're playing the smarter rugby in this first kind of quarter. Yeah, you would have, yeah. Still in, still in! Get off! Jamie, stop, stop, stop! But we know Sarah's. Yeah, 
really, really drilled up and uh, incredibly high standards. So that one was a line out anyway. Yeah, two errors there though, missing the, the touch. They went for a big long kick and it just uh, didn't quite make it. So they put themselves under pressure now, but win it back. More forwards kicking. We're going to have full back scrummaging in a minute. Yeah, I get, like, I, I've got a love hate relationship with it, I think, on a turnover. On a turnover when you win it, that's prime chance for you to attack, to keep the ball, and I actually think carry there and then build off the phases. Sometimes, yes, if you're catching off guard, and to be fair, that did make Sarri's retreat and, and go back, but I just wonder if she'd kept a ball in hand there from Powell what the faces could have been off the back of it, but I see what she was thinking and love the confidence that she went for it. You can see that confidence from that victory over Sale coursing through. Harlequins. Something there all season. Majority of it, Langi Tuima, no look past to Mayhew. It's exceptional in that final one. Quinn's won it, of course. Came on early. Scott. It's a little bit scrappy, but it's an amazing feat of Emily Scott just setting things back up. Holding on, Harlequins. And as we say, Saracens very, very adept to playing the rope at Opal, they just absorbing, absorbing, and then sparking into life. We saw it with the Poppy Cleo break earlier. Yeah, and I think as well, if you're going to, when you go footwork, you look like you're going to go one way, you then come back against the runner play and go into a team like Saracens. Um, that is when you are at risk of getting turned over, getting jackled or having the holding on penalty against, because look like going go one way, really quick hands in here and good um, support to get through. Oh, is that one? Yeah, OK. May Campbell, who is a turnover aficionado. That was number 14 of the season. Gregson! He's given the pass, the whistle will go. The whistle will go, everyone can calm down. Oh, I thought she was through there. I thought she read that really, really well, which, which she did, but obviously playing from an earlier. always going backwards. We've gone nowhere, look. Right, come on. Good. Let's go. Read from Amy Lizell. Just at 22 years of age. Right, let's start forming up, please. Even under 20s international. Come on. She's let's go. come on early here in the duel. Good experience for her. have an incredible production line, don't they, Harlequin? Such a, a rich vein of rugby talent. Geographically, where Harlequins are situated. Still 7-0, just over the half-hour mark here in this, the 15th encounter. The last side, the last two by margin of 20 plus points. Cleo comes away. That's not easy with a scrum retreating. She's done incredibly well to get over that game line. And Sass as a team do that so well. 62% of the time they get over that game line breach. Farris and sensibly she stays away from that touchline. Infante. Oh, she's seen again. McKinley Hunt. Prop now, plays in the second row as well. Evans, here's the 22. It's been all Harlequins, but here comes Saracens. Clear. And he claps out there, stays on her feet, allowing that support to come around. And now it's May Campbell. Buzz ball of a hooker, loves the ball in hand as May Campbell. Onside, Quinns, onside! 
it slowed down. She has changed the tactics. Infante left it for Packer. That's Marley Packer. No relation. Have to reload here, Saracens. They do that through Toffee Clear. He's around the right hand side of that ruck and then gives the penalty away. And Lucy Packer may get away with that right, one. If you start he... shouting at me, I will march you tech. And out of the jail free card. And Be careful. First referee. Female referee to get an MBE is having none of that chat. Chat, I should say, from, from Marley Packer. Rightly so. I heard her earlier actually say, uh, McKenna, stop shouting at me. She said it to their Packer, stop shouting at me. So she's not going to take it, and referee shouldn't have to. So um, fair play, right call. I will mark you back if you do it. Okay, you've done it. Back you go. Real trailblazer. Sarah Cox. Oh, uh, curtsy. For her when she came on to the pitch earlier. I don't know if that's the right thing to do with an NBA, but <laughs> okay. yeah, set a precedent, why not? Mom. Mom with a whistle. <laughs> no, Jesting aside, what a servant to the whistleblowers. Emily Robinson. Sister sits on the bench. Flo Robinson. Thatcher. Behind that gain line though for for Saracens. Just throwing that ball down so effectively, Saracens. And it's another penalty at the breakdown. Both teams getting done for, for holding on, which just shows me that they need those support players to, to arrive quicker and to be a lot more effective at the breakdown to allow um, teams to just keep with that ball, keep building momentum without risk of being turned over. Thirty-four minutes gone. Of time in sight, there's a shower of rain. Stone accept peace will be spoken about, I suspect, by Alex Austin, the Saracens coach at half time. Need to tighten up in that area. Well, there might be some, some changes. Donna Rose, Gondwe on the bench. But now it's the starting 15, and Campbell kicking and going. Fante digs it out, throws the left-hand side. And characteristically, just lots of mistakes from Saracens. Yeah, and you, you think when they've, you know, they've just got that right, they're building, they're in close, and, and you do have to take, and it, to be fair, it's not a risk to do a pass blind, not that far. But yeah, it's more the, the areas in, because building, you can see, yeah, just look up. how tight that Quinn's defence are, and actually, if that does go to hand, um, they're in in the, in the corner, but... Good defence to fly out the line and try and put pressure on there. Yeah, wing has got to hold depth as well if you're going to do that. So the difference is, I think, where people are saying, the ball needs to be flat, the, the pass needs to be flat, but you need to be deep enough to hit on to allow that to happen. One of your trademarks, Gap. All good. Cap. All good. Your playing days to that ball at a real pace, but yeah, Lottie Clapp will be disappointed when she sees that one back, she just got too excited. Yeah. Seen, Keep her depth. Yeah, it's something, um, I'm obsessed with it, um, but yeah, just holding the depth, hitting on, it makes such a difference, because if you receive the ball and you're flying, great, you don't really want to get it and then have to accelerate, whereas if you're too flat, there's always a risk that it could go behind you. Bonnen and Latcher. Only a couple more metres. Getting a better angle for 
Right, the kick. Behind the ball. Use it! Behind the ball. Sitaka goes to touch. Only just in the 22, though. Let's get some thoughts from the uh, Harlequins management now. Tack and transition coach Ross Chisholm is uh, with Dave. He certainly is. Uh, I've been down here with Ross for the last couple of minutes. We're keeping a firm eye on this game because it's in the 22. Uh, Ross, what are we, 35, 36 minutes in? It, it's a proper derby. Yeah, it's a real contest. It always is the same between these two sides. And um, pretty pleased with most of the first half. Probably been a little bit inaccurate in the 22 and haven't been accurate enough to sort of get out of this area at the moment. Well, we're going to have a look at something that's going on here. I think Quinns have just held... Saracen's up over the line. We're going to the TMO, Ross. We're going to have to throw it back up to Johnny to talk us through this one. So are we talking more? No. Oh, they're in fast forward, weren't they, that up, uh, Saracen's line out? Okay, so Just give me a second. Yeah, no worries, no are, you, are you sure you've got it held up? I, I am, so my on-field decision will be no try. So we're going to double-check that, and then we'll also check. Yeah, OK. Off you go. So we are going to have a word with Dan Jones, who's looking at this one. Oh, uh, yeah. The player's knees in behind it, stopping that ball from going up. Right, ball is clearly held up, Sarah. Yeah. Clearly held up. Do you want to check anything further? Yeah, so I want to check the entry of the six just before that as well, so we just need to roll back um, just prior to that. So you can clock, he's got the side entry by the six. Yeah, we're just going to check the actions from the far side of the mall, yeah, see the proximity you. to the goal line. Yeah, thank you very much. So confirmed, that was held up. It's just the legality of, of Harlequins at the side of the ruck we're having a look, we look at now. So entrance into it is what they are looking for. Yeah, Matthew, I think that's got enough momentum there. But if that six hadn't done what she'd done... So just this is your best angle. angle. Yeah. That's Abby Fleming on that right-hand side. It's Freya Orkin who gets her thighs in the way of the try. It's so Abby Fleming's work yeah, on Matthew, this right-hand side. As well from that six? Yeah, that, that ball started from 15 metres out. Yep. Um, James's call of side entry is correct and collapse. Yep, so I will put her in the bin and I'll give a penalty to try as well, yeah? Yeah, I agree with that. Number six. Abby Fleming giving her marching orders. Thanks, and a penalty try as well. If Abby Fleming hadn't come in the side, the uh, officials between them decided that Saracens would have got the try. No need for the conversion with a penalty try. We are all square, strangely enough, in the duel, this London derby. Just before half-time as well. So Saracens in it for 35 minutes, really under the pump, really capped in their own half. Yeah, historically they've just done it time and time again. If they are in the rare occasions where they are behind, they just know how to claw their way back. OK, stop, Black, wait! Black now go. He's got behind He's got that one, but excellent positioning from Emily Scott, who has played some rugby in the back three, plenty of rugby at full-back. No Campbell. Another one of those no. performers for club week in, week out. Yeah, no Cut by England last year in the Six Nations. Black lock. Now some space. <whistles> we are going to have to stop because uh, there's a medic on the field. Come off. That was a shame for Saracens. They're just beginning to 
field, weren't they? And they don't yeah, need don't much to flick the switch, Saris. Yeah, and and it's that 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 penalty try that they were awarded uh, is enough to ignite them to to go in because you know at half time they'll probably want to go in with a lead. I know they were seven points down for a lot of this game, but being in as a draw, I think they're going to want more from that, and they were starting to really build with that. So this uh, showing the penalty try again, so Fleming deemed to have come in at the wrong angle, so in at the sides, and um, Sarah Cox pretty sure that that might have gone over, and it's not have been for that. I mean, there are strong arguments on both sides, aren't they? But that is rumbling towards the line, and when it was stopped illegally. Yeah, it was half a meter away. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't as obvious as some, but if she's come in at the side and it would have gone over, then, then yeah, it's the right, right call. Set. To okay. We just need better height just from both be of you, okay? Just be solid here, Saracens. Just wonder, Zoe Harrison is All right, let's get a better bench. height where we can scrummage, okay? The Red Roses second, so fly half, of course. She might be injected into this game in the second 40 minutes. Crouch. For a little while. Discretion against healing trail finders Bites. earlier in the season. Since from their point of view, Blacklock takes a couple to stop up. Tuimo was one of them. Poppy Clear now working hard around the corner. Fante, a couple of steps for George Evans to run a little wider. Blacklock again, pull back for Gregson. And then straight through the gap is Lottie Clark. Saracens pouring forward. And stolen back. Quinn stole it, and then Saris stole it back again. Four meters short here, Saracens. We're on side. We're on side. Farris waiting on this right-hand side. Forwards won't give this one up easily, and are over again. Kinley Hunt, the presence of mind to stay low, to use the post, and Saracens from 7-0 down, and now 12 and probably 14-7 up. You said it doesn't take much to get them switched on, and absolutely it doesn't, so there's some lovely lines here, and Lottie Clapp just slinks in between those defenders there because there's multiple options of who it can go to. Head down, off she goes. She's scanning to have a look, a good cover tackle by Kildun. But when it comes down to it, Hunt just too close to that try line, gets her body uh, low and gets the score. A sumptuous delay pass from Sydney Gregson as well, it has to be said. Black clock first conversion. Doesn't get it. It remains 12 7. What an intriguing half of rugby. Harlequins off the back of that, that victory at Sale. Came out with real, real confidence. Played all the territory, most of the possession as well. But it's Saracens who just sparked into life in the last five minutes. Half time here at the Stonex. Saracens 12. Harlequin seven. Can't not hear Sarah Cox, MBE. Second 40 underway then. Here are the Stone X. First action, first mistake from Lucy Packer, who had an opening 40 minutes of some excellence. Yeah, great first yeah. half. She'll be disappointed with that, but there's Ladies. definitely something on that ball out there today Ladies. because there's been more knock-ons than you would expect from these two teams. Coaching set up to our right hand side. Tabernatson is here. Ten 
table. Ravensburg still has it as well. Sorry, the Saracens coaching box to our left. Bind! And the, the greenhouse, though. So we got here their reaction, Set. but there was a great Set. reaction to Lucy Tucker. Oh, Dropping that ball, it's giving Saracens this scrub. And that's going forward now is an area of concern in that first 40 minutes. Blacklock fires one. Sidney Gregson can't take it. We'll come back for the penalty at the scrum, though. And Leanne Infante asking oh, the forwards, do you want it, do you want it? <laughs> exactly. In a derby, you, you go for the sticks, don't you, Cat? Yes, I, I would have, but they've well. not. What are we know? going for the corner. <laughs> but, well, the, there's a sensible thing, is to come away with the three points. However, um, they know that Quinns is still a player down. So actually, might as well go for the line out, make the most of it and try and go for a full seven. So that must be probably what's going through their head. Just, just taking the line out. Spin round on that right hand side. Evans has been pulled out, but driving towards their line, they're over it. There is an air of inevitability about that from Saracens. The mistake from the kickoff. Foot on the jugular, Saracens get try number three. Yeah, and an important one as well for, for them because they just scored before half-time, scored two. So to come back now and the confidence to go for it for the corner, making advantage of the yellow card being off for Quinns and then just getting that moving. We know that they are um, they are so good at the driven line-out ball and just peeling off at the right time to make sure they can score. Here's McKinley Hunt with a double. Normally it's May Campbell, isn't it, who's, who's in there, dotting those ones down. McKinley Hunt. Canadian international. Heading from Ontario and North London. Beth Blacklock was in South London now. North London, that's a much better strike for Beth Blacklock. And it's the full seven points to Saracens. Bang, bang, two tries just before half time. Bang, a third just after half time. That's the stuff of champions. Oh, definitely. Knowing exactly how to execute when it's most needed. But Quinns need to really dig deep now and not let this go because they had started so well. They need to make sure they back that up. Ball in hand, no. Dummies back. to kick, no kicks as well. Black, black clock. Time at DMP, didn't she? While well, she was at Durham University. To Harlequins to then come here to Saracens. Kill Dunning at first receiver. It's not gone to plan. It's gone to Lottie Clapp, though. Pokes one over the top, black clock. And Jess Breach. Trying to stay away from touch, but Connie Powell, her Red Rose's teammate, was there. I haven't seen much of Jess Breach flowing. Not been that kind of game so far. No, not really seen her get much. Um, ball in space or ball at all really there's not been that type of game to get it to it to the uh, the full back hitting in big cheer here at the stone x's for one of their favorites zoe harrison on the field now racing up in defense as well beth blacklock no let go let a little go. dejected didn't she And that long injury, that hair pulling incident against Ealing Trail Finders. <laughs> Haven't seen much okay, of Zoe sure Harrison, but the you Six know. Nations not far away. Oh, please, Lou Meadows and the other Red Roses coaches here today. There is Harrison. Kinley Hunt barreling her way forward. Breach came in at first receiver for May Campbell then. This ball is being looked after better. 
Well, Saracens McKenna. Sydney Gregson. Right idea, wasn't it, from Sarah McKenna? Just a bounce of the old rugby ball. Yeah, there was space out there. Um, I'd like to see the lineup um, again, just to, to fully look at it. Uh, good timing there. Um, so yeah, over the top. Yeah, maybe just uh, need, needed even a slight bit more onto it, um, so you could get the winger hitting it at pace. But the the gap was there. So really nice spot of the gap execution, not quite. Technical part of the Red Roses for many years. Sarah Kennan, not on the forefront of things, but social secretary down in New Zealand at the World Cup was organising all the games. And just a really, really talented player. Can play most positions along the back line. And at 12. Harlequins are back up to 15. There is Abby Fleming. Welsh international, ever present this season. Crouch! Harlequins are the absence of that lady, Emily Robinson. Bind! Sarah Bonham, Sitting leading the, uh, the Wallaroo, and filling in in that back row. Abby Fleming at seven, which is at six today, and back on the field, two Ema. Kill done, it's a little pedestrian, then Orkin just tries to inject some pace into it, but welcome on breakdown was superb from both teams in that first 40. Shauna Brown, that's a good clear. And there's Robinson. Packer. Lochner. Scott. Almost intercepted by Georgia Evans. I think she's nearly got it. Question is being asked whether yeah, it's anything it. more yeah, than a, a knock on. That's what I've just seen, that's what I thought of the Yeah, so so I was explaining her decision there that thinks she could have got it, but if it's one hand, that's what they want to be looking at, there's two hands. So that's completely right decision. Two hands to it, going for it. The one that they're looking for is that one hand or the downward slap because you're stopping the opposition from playing where she's trying to proactively catch it and is genuinely going for that intercept. Yeah, they're genuinely going for the ball and just heard in her ears the television match official. Dan Jones just saying totally agree with the referee on that call. There's Poppy clear is down. Receiving some treatment. Rugby just coming at you from every angle at the moment. PWR, this competition break next week. But rugby continues on TNT. Back to the Premiership Cup. Saturday, 3 o'clock, TNT Sports 1 for Gloucester. Up against Exeter. And then on the Sunday, Ealing take on Leicester. Half past two for that one on Sunday. Again, TNT Sports 1. Stewie on Discovery Plus, of course, as well. And then we, we gear up a couple of rounds, sign up. We early March for the Super Weekend at PWR. Rugby all four games available for you. That's league really beginning to grab some traction now. Game from every round here on TNT Sports for you. For the semi-finals and the final, of course, as well. What is widely known and regarded as the best women's rugby league competition in the world. Two of its finest battling it out here at the Stone X. 19-7 to Saracens. Don't like losing at home. One last 10 here. I don't particularly like losing at all. Lost 13 in their 120 Premiership games. That's an extraordinary record. As Connie Powell tries to do something about that, tries to make a dent to Wima. The pass was just too much for Izzy Mayhew. 
Your Harlequins need to grab some possession to just get hold of the ball for a while. Yeah, just to keep hold of it, build the phases and potentially pull it back a little bit deeper because they are playing that flat game, uh, which is great and can punch in behind. But actually, Saracens are defending it very well and almost intercepted, so they perhaps need to go a bit deeper to get round them or keep punching into them. Set! Drive off the back of the scrum as well. Across field again. Tackle! Let go! Let go! Harkins have Where possession, but Leave it. In between that 10 metre line and the 22. It's Fleming and Shauna Brown, which was so Tackle. evident last week. Shauna Brown, was he? Like 12 carries, I think. In that game, she's just not getting that kind of go forward today because Saracens are a very, very canny outfit. Think about the game. The man who told me a little bit earlier on, Alex Salisbury, he's never happy. It's quarter full, <laughs> not even a half. Well, David's uh, uh, found Alex Salisbury, and we can get to Alex's thoughts right now in that glass box. Well, we're about to find out, actually, Johnny, because, Alex, I asked you before the game if you were happy. You said to ask you after the game, but we're 50 minutes in, so where are you on that happiness scale right now? Uh, yeah, a little bit mixed, isn't it? We've had a good five minutes both sides of the half, but other than that, we've not done a lot of things consistently well. You know, high error count. Um, some of our execution of decisions have led to pressure being put on us. So ultimately, I'm yeah, not overly happy, but at least we're in a better place than we were at one point. I'd imagine one of the big work-ons, or one of the things you'd have asked at half-time was for a good start to the second half. Uh, you've got that with the try. Yeah, yeah, hopefully we can then back that up with something else. Uh, it's just been a little bit scrappy since the try. Um, so can we, can we get our quality, can we impart ourselves in this next period of play to really take a hold of the game? Because uh, at the minute, it's anybody's. Well, Harlequins certainly imparted themselves at the start of the game. What do you think they did particularly well to cause you those problems? Kept hold of the ball, defended pretty well, uh, were more disciplined, um, and then we that in turn invited us making some poor execution errors, which uh, just kept inviting pressure. So they managed pressure and momentum better than we did for 30 minutes. Well, good luck for the rest of the game. I'll let you get back in the warm. Uh, best seats in the house, these Johnny, so I'm going to stay here. Uh, back to you. I like the fact you weren't allowed in, Dave. Not allowed in the glass box. Stay outside. Backwards, backwards. Talking about those mistakes, Alex Orsabri. Just breach would have wanted to catch that one clean. He's gone backwards. Emily Scott takes the responsibility there. Overlays out. Turani. Middle of the park with Latcher. Lucy Packer whips it away now. Scott again and Bonner. No! Quinn Fighting their way back into this game. George Evans was so close to turning no, no, that no, ball no, over no. with May Campbell again. You have to release. Kill done. Not an easy pass to take. It was dying on her early kill done. But again, by her standards, that's a, that's a poor mistake. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it was a little low for her and possibly coming in at first receiver, she's looking and thinking about what she has to do next. So next job, what am I doing? But it, it is a pretty low pass there. You can see she's having to scoop down by her toes to try and get it. Hello, Cromack. Is on the field. The lady's been uh, really, really impressing this season. Despite the trials and tribulations of what's going on at home with Dad, and of course, we wish you all the best. Time for Simon to get involved in, in that campaign. Diagnosed with terminal brain injury. And Young lady out there coping with all of that and playing some cracking rugby as well. Comes on as a sub ring 22. 
Is he may you the lady to make way as Kill Duck tries to get her running game going, tries to get Harlequins going. They find themselves deep in their own half, Shauna Brown. No, please, don't, don't. You need to use that ball. Use it! Saracen's on side, please. Packer goes high, but not particularly long. It's actually gone straight out. And it's another, it's an unforced error like the Ellie Kildun drop. They've lit a Harlequin season. Yeah, these errors are really costly for them because we've seen what they can do when they pull things together. They, they get some really nice shape. They have good options through their forwards, also out the back uh, to their very quick and uh, skillful back line. But we're just not seeing it because too many errors are coming in before they get a chance to actually play and go through those phases. Pensive, I think, is a good word to describe the, the mood on that bench. A club that okay, certainly two years ago when the likes of Tony Diprose, Atlanta Sick John, Karen Finley, Gary Street, of course, were put the help. Street, if you're watching, continue to progress well, my friend. Get yourself home to Helen and the boys. Streets ahead. Go funny pace to help Gary in his recovery. We're just leading the way and everything to do with women's club rugby. Just dropped off that. It's troubling times for the quarters. Fante and Evans, nice hands from her. Fante again whips it away. Harrison. Clap. Just inviting Gregson to cut in and Gregson has found a way through. Tackle in the end from Harlequins as May Campbell takes it in the midfield. Emily Robinson almost turned that ball away. McKinley Hunt driving for a hat trick. Saracen's on the front foot again, getting over that gain line. Poppy clear. Tackle! done is trying to hold her up, but there's acres of space on the right hand side. Onside. Keep it Onside. tight though. Kelsey Clifford. It looks like they've got herself over that line again, Saracen, from short range. And it is McKinley Hunt. Patrick for the Canadian. And all from a total distance of about half a metre. Yeah, but you've got to be there and you've got to be in the position uh, to do it and put yourself there. So some good carries in the build-up before that, but I could just see her approaching. Uh, she's got her eye on it. She's in that breakdown, the one before, so she's working hard and then she's just scanning and looking and going through the middle, actually pretty difficult because there is a risk there that you get held up. Obviously, if you get held up, you lose the option, but she just sees enough of a gap to get herself through there to get her hat-trick. Some work for the Canadian. And Zoe Harrison, as you would expect, adds the two as well. Massive breathing space between these two. Now the broadest point in the bag for, for Saracen for scoring the four tries. Three of them from that lady. Real power runner, isn't she? So she's played in the second row. She was in the second row for Canada during the World Cup. Front row as well. Pushed out the way. And Infante. Not happy. She can't get her hands on the ball. Yeah, and Infante is reply to the referee it's surprising for a scrum half Bridie Field is the no, new hooker for Saracens my Campbell has gone off you're taking that back in okay? another youngster Bridie Field 
started last week and was out of the top draw. Killed up off that right, devastating right foot. Back against the grain. Just can't see can a, a way through for for Harlequins, especially when the, the ball is a little bit wider. But hello, Chrome at me. We're looking to change all of that. Tuani. Orca. Tuani is less than a minute. Lucy Packer. Back again. Deliver knock on by 11. Easy clap. Judge to have knocked that one on deliberately. Bobby Cleal's uh, gone down again on the far Deliver side. It's just a bit of cramp in the, in the right leg. But it's uh, a chance here for Harlequin. There's plenty of time left in this game, Kat. Yeah, I'm not, I've yeah, not stopped you. Yeah, they've been you're, you're looking. looking they, they've been looking for those gaps. They've been desperate to go for it. And there's the little hand there. Uh, from Clap, which is uh, intentional. It's gone off and forward to try and stop the pass, but that means it's now a penalty. And they've got to come away with something here. They've really got to execute well on this line out. Just about to ask you that. I mean, this is make or break now, isn't it, for this game? Have to score here. Well, these are the pressure moments. These are the ones where actually you do have to get something right now. And, uh, there's no mistake about it. It's not, oh, there might be a next time. It says it's now. You need to execute in order to stay in this game. Emma Taylor. Good afternoon to her. Probably clears. Very gingerly walking off the field. Typically physical performance from, from Poppy Cleal. Yeah, she's done some great carries from eight. The one where she bounced um, Scott out the way and then led to a line break, but she's done some good hands as well. She's, she's been busy today. Connie Powell. Huge amount of the line out today. South Africa and then Connie Powell, you can see her just on this right hand side, need to protect that ball. It's swinging round no, from it Saracens. Close eye don't being kept on this by the referee, and now it's out. Cromack. Really scored a first try in the PWR. Lacha. Pack up, whips it out again. Again, second one in this on movement. On sides, we're on sides. Robinson asking Caitlin Lee, who's, who's joining, just to come on her hip and try and drive this ball forward. Robinson without the scum cap now. We're on sides, on sides, Harrison. So narrow, though, Harlequins. Apart from Orkin, Orkin's right out on that five metre, Apart waving the hands up. She wants the crossfield. Cromack. Oh, look at this. That is brilliant. They were so narrow in the midfield. Cromack with an inch perfect kick. Freya Orkin underneath it, and Harlequins have scored that try. They so needed to. Yeah, that was really, really good. And Orkin had spotted that. Like, you couldn't see it from this angle here, but she'd been loitering there, like, waving across desperately. But what a kick. What a kick for her to be able to receive that lovely nudge. And then really well taken as well, because they're not easy ones to take, um, especially a lot of pressure on. But they needed to score, and they did. Responsibilities as well. 11 points so far this season. Was up at 75%. That one's 
gone wayward. Just what Saris has needed, just what the neutral wanted to see in this game. to know each other very well, don't they? Plenty of caps for the Red Roses. Had to be a different kind of performance. It was always going to be today, wasn't it? Ellie Kildan afforded so much space by Sale last week. This one tight, niggly, proper derby. Crowd wanted to come and see. There's a knock on there as well, it's a knock on back here. And then there's one there as well. Double lock on for Saracens. Interesting conversation going on between Infante and Marley Packer and Zoe Harrison as she gets that message down her back line. Kenner and Gregson, Harris. We've got a guys for. The Marley Packerisms Five. that you may have just heard. Set. The former Yeovil plumber is a very, very passionate lady. One of a human being as well, Gregson. Is trying to step and she's fooled herself by knocking that ball on. Yeah, there's been some moments of um, brilliance in this game, but there's been some moments that certain players won't want to look back at. And uh, we've seen how devastating uh, Grayson can be with her run uh, in the first half, but yeah, she won't want to look at that one again. Yeah, well, plenty for the crowd to enjoy as Gondwe and, and Rose come on. Two new props for Saracens, but it, it's been a great crowd here. There's been some brilliant social media around trying to build this game up and it's such a congested day of rugby. A record crowd for a women's game here at the Stone X. 3,071 in the rain, in the sunshine. All thoroughly enjoyed. Enjoy, I should say, their rugby is going for the last 15 minutes of this game. Marley, no, no. 21 tries scored this season in the last quarter of games. That's 32% yep. of their here. tries. Back to her feet. For Saracens. Stolen. How'd you go? They do come good towards right, the wait, end of the Brad, game. Wait. Yep, yep, yep. Zoe Harrison is going to run and run and run, though. Some Freya Orchid just to get that one bounce. We'll have a scrum all the way back because the kick was Zoe Harrison was kicked out and went out over the goal line. Scrum down to Harlequins. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's having that patience to see if it is going to go all the way um, dead or, or bounce out uh, rather than preemptively putting it down beforehand. So, yeah, great, great decision. And all the way back here. Yeah. Going all the way back. Okay. Sarah Cox. Number three. It was almost brilliant, three wasn't right. it, from, from Zoe Harrison. Right. From an England point of view, to see Zoe Harrison back out there on the field. Boa Lachia. Our afternoon is done, as we say. Good afternoon to Hannah Duffy, a premiership winner, Hannah Duffy, with Saracens and with Harlequins. Crouch! Some good stats. <laughs> I told you. Bye! The long winter nights. <laughs> okay. 
we're not balanced at the moment and we're not at a very good height for each other, okay? <laughs> Let's get the balance. <laughs> Let's get the height, okay? Here she we go has again. worked her socks off, hasn't she, Latcha? So you can scrummage. Latcha. You tell me. <laughs> Try to throw an awkward sheet. One of the big, big runners. Twice in the move. Yeah, it's that, it's that work rate to not just carry the once, but like draw, and that's what drew that Saracens defence in so tight, and Quinns were tight as well, as we as we identified, right, apart from Orkin, who'd called it and go across, but right. you can't have the whip without no. having the, the people so who are willing to do those no strong okay, carries in tight. Is, there's a problem with this. Get the gaps, get your feet in the right places, and get going, please. Stop, stop messing around. A little bit of scrutiny the communications from the referees to players. I'm certain to so I've got step. Messing around, we've not had these controls with the other front rowers. Set! Finally clearing out. Jay Cockle Roberts missing, of course, as well. And Sims in that front row as well. Katie New back to some kind of training. Saw sure, Amelia Harper as well. Queens so, without a few. That's our Saracens. Callaghan, Vivas. We've done some space and time that time. There's a turn that ball over though. Farris, Donna Rose. Just about gets the ball away. So a little tentative. The time out of the game, that's what can happen sometimes. Gondrick. Only a Worcester, no, of course. Let go. Okay, let's have a ball in hand. No, don't touch it. Kina Gonway, Harrison. Big, long boot of hers. <laughs> Emily Scott, though, fancies a run. And Orkin does he now at touchline for Robinson. Oh, now gives it back to Orkin. Tirani, well picked up Cromack. Right off our bootlaces. Fly off again. Fizzing it around for Ellie Kill Dunn. Harlequin's building nicely here, patiently. Dunn again, so as to put a boot on the ball. And in doing that, she's given that possession away back to Saracens. Is that the right call from the Red Roses fullback? Um, for me personally, no, um, because I'm a big believer. Ball in hand, build the pressure. Um, they, you know, they've struggled for possession in this second half. What I think she was obviously trying to do was thread it through. Have big pressure on defence, maybe keep it in, put the pressure on, but by going there, Saris have a good line out. So, um, but they will end up kicking back to Quinns, but obviously it's going to be a good 40, 50 metres back. So I'd like to see it in hand and see what um, they can do. You're, you're not helping the cause and they're not helping the cause, yeah. So if you give each other space and you set up properly, then, then I won't be scared of it, yeah. So God, she's having a, a word with the Harlequins new hooker, Kaz Phillips, the Welsh international. We just come back to Eddie Kilgan. It's about getting those moments right, isn't it? The accuracy of the angle of the kick just wasn't right from, from Eddie Kilgan. And in the duel against Saracens, you've got to get that stuff right. Yeah, and, and I think early on in the game, maybe a good idea because you can put a load of pressure on you can go through but when you're chasing a game 
and you're 26 12 down you don't want to kick your possession away because you need to score points so it's not necessarily about pressure at that point so early on get it but this late in the game less than 10 minutes to go keep the ball when you're chasing it Not only by the, the rugby music as well. Come on then, you're critiquing my dance moves. What about those, Kat? Are they okay? oh, I thought they were, the little ones were pretty cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good dance in there. So Saris fans have won the dance off, it looks like, <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> 14 points the difference. Okay. Another injury to, to deal we'll with here as well. Right, Sarah so Bonner is going to come back on, the birthday girl. It's a good week to have a birthday. Sarah Bonner, you have your returns on your <coughs> 30th. Daniel Lochner. He's the lady who's coming up from the Western province. Play arrives in the autumn of November. So Donna thought her afternoon was done. She's back into trying to take a line out here. Harris Phillips, the hooker though, is one who takes it at the back. And Harlequins have powered over. The line-out didn't go to plan, but everything off the back of it did. And Harlequins have given themselves a lifeline here in the duel. And that is one of the things by putting pressure on. So we said we'd rather see ball in hand, but actually by going for the corner, by putting pressure on the line-out, Sarri's um, not quite managing to keep it. And the way that Quinn's reacted, look how quickly they get into shape and that is a really strong finish. Saris will be disappointed with their defence there. That said, because I think there's enough from their stopper, but Quince took their opportunity and took it well. What a finish we have then. <laughs> Go White. Another one of these impressive youngsters at Harlequins. He's got through that tackle of McKenna. Can't do much about that. Tacklers in behind, he's got a pace going. The solo comes off, the McKenna comes off. Fresh legs everywhere, you, you look. Trying to put Bridger on. Grace Moore, Ireland International, one of the five test players on the bench for Saracen, along with the 14 that started. Yep. Don't think it's going to be the 20 plus Take points the difference the last two games between these two have been. Tighter. Fight. Some skills need tightening up. Both these teams at times it's been, been edgy. Abby Fleming is flirting with the offside line. As George Evans went through. Godwee picks it up and Grace Moore arrives. Fante is still out there, starting scrum half. Sorry, Harrison just dicks on over the top, finds some some grass, Game some plastic. Here we go. Spirals it downfield. Fante, she's inside her 22. Can't find touch though. Back to Ellie Kilda. Go on, 
Give him footwork. It's White again. The try scorer. Scott. Well, there's two playmakers now, haven't they? Emily Scott and Ella Cromack. There she is, that long wide pass for Orkut. Lots of claps, not going to miss that tackle. It's been there and done it, got the mug. Special commemorative bars. Fleming. Dustrous as ever. Use the ball! Flo Robinson. First season at Harlequins. First experience of the duel to him up. Little show from her. Duffy, there's a sort of linchpin out there for the Duffy. But Harlequins have possession. Don't have Lane Tweem at the moment, who's down, kill done. Farris wraps up play around ball. Robinson again, oh, she's seen a gap. Flo Robinson, it's come off the legs. The referee says the player knew exactly what they were doing. Penalty Harlequins. Now what do you do? Yeah, five minutes left. Penalty here. Seven points in it. Yeah, time's off. Yeah. I just had to check my maths quickly there. I was like, is it seven? No, it is seven. Um, yeah, big, big things to be asked because they could take a three, but really if they wanted to go for this and to start that winning, they need to really go for the line out. Some flows of this game. We thought, didn't we, early in the second half that Saracens two tries from Achille Hunt, her hat trick and, and a bonus point score. Saracens were going to rather run away, run away with this game, but oh, they fought their way back into this game. Yeah, it was all down to when it was the line out down here and they had to get something from it and they did. They went for the phases, Orkin went in for the for the score and they've they've turned up when they've needed to, but it's where it counts now is this last five minutes and what they do and they have done they've listened to us, they're going for that, uh, they're going for the line out. Good crystal ball work, Cat Marchant. They've gone to the corner for the line out, the seven point gamble. Phillips to Bonner. That's secure. Sarah's is not giving anything away as Harlequins try to drive it around that left hand side. And the players are coming right through the middle as well in this one. Oh, it's illegally done from Saracens. Penalty again here for Harlequins. Change the, the, the bind, the says leg. the referee. You also can't change your bind and then come round, OK? Stillness. Big, big moments in the duel 2024 here. So much pressure now for Saracen's defence to keep this, but also for that the Quinns to make sure they nail this line out. Leading just about, another penalty coming here. Maybe more when this breaks down. If it breaks down, Karis Phillips is there. Goes on the left-hand side. Oh, Quinns have got it! Quinns have got there. Two points, the difference in the duel. What a moment from Harlequins. They have not stopped fighting all afternoon. 26 24. So you could see there, Evans had jumped in front of this uh, good spot by referee right at the front of the line out before. So it means that Quinns are playing with that advantage, but they actually, they didn't need it. A well-timed pick uh, around the corner. And then a great snipe around the corner there. Fantastic. Amy Lazell. 
Well, Karis Phillips, all that experience of an international who knew they weren't going to get the drive up. She breaks off, and then the sharpness of thought from Amy Lazell. Here's the conversion. The flag stay down. Yeah, Lazell there doing so well. Um, like, uh, coming on in the back three, you're not necessarily expecting um, to get your try from a pick and go. Um, but, you know, but she does. And that's, uh, it, it is a hard skill as well to time it and to go round. So fair play. To, uh, but yeah, the kick not quite making it means that now they're still chasing this game by two points. Bonus point for Harlequins. They, at the moment, are leaving with two points. Minute and a half or so left in this game. Proper, proper derby. No quarter arse, no none given. Tuima. Yeah, just hacks it out. Phil. Good catch, my table. Saracen's ball. And they know, get something rumbling here, they can deny Harlequins a losing bonus point. And that will be the motivation here for Saracens. Just trying to keep distance at the top of the table as well. And for Lightning Leicester, to the sale tomorrow, goes to Hartway, Bristol, Infante. Gonwick. <laughs> Riley Packer. Driving towards that line. No. Sounds with a bit between their teeth. No, Hasn't no. been a thing of beauty, has it? But the tightness of this game and then Infante will want to get her hands on the ball here. She is told in non certain terms to wait. Oh, the time's up the word. 79.54, tea is on. Either or, he's come on with the tea, it has to go up. There goes the dog. That is full time. The tee is on the field. Wondered what Saracens were going to do. There was a, a conversation going on. <laughs> <coughs> but the tee was on. The coaches made the decision. Sorry, Harrison, just to add three more points at the end. The win was there. That confirms it. And the duel, 20, 24 is won by Saracens. Five out of the last six between these two great, great rivals is won by Saracens. But boy, do they have to work for it. The final score at the Stonex, Saracens 29. Harlequins 24.